Well, 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 what do you know? I am still around. <laughs> Honestly, um, there's such an energy in the air, an energy of melancholy. And, um, you know, that melancholy, we usually uh, acknowledge as bad, as like life sucking, um, as it being non-attractive, but it's real, you guys. It's very, very, very real. It is a part of our life and our way. And it's very real, especially when you're incredibly exhausted. And I'm not talking about exhausted because you've been out partying and you've been staying up late or you've been putting all of your energy into a project that you finally are submitting. It's not an exhaustion um, because you just traveled halfway around the world. Um, <laughs> my sister just texted like, um, not realizing that I teach virtually and um, <laughs> just assumed that my daughter was with my mom, but she's not. So she is just on the other side of these walls watching um, PBS Kids. So anyhow, something that is really important to me is giving voice to that which most people don't want to talk about. It is what drives people from coming back to my classes um, because I can make you feel too much and feel too deeply. And the reason for that is really to gather evidence of why have I felt so deeply my whole life and so melancholy um, and feelings are really important. And if we're gonna ground our souls, that's kind of an oxymoron saying that. It's like grounding a rock, right? The rock's already on the ground. Unless it's a meteor, <laughs> right? If it's on earth, it is on the ground, okay? in our reality, in our um, geocentric experience, that is that the earth is the center of our universe because it's where we live. Okay, grounding our soul, it's so important to me because we can get so spiritual and we can become so intellectual that we run away from the exhaustion or the melancholy, or um, we shame ourselves into sh shooting, right? I should have, I should do this, I shooting all over ourselves, as somebody once said to me. That we're, we condemn our feeling, feeling down or empty or lost or scared. This is the human experience. So we are collectively the mundane, that is the whole moon, mundi, the whole world, is experiencing like human exhaustion. Our relationship to reality and to our normalcy is in a radical restructuring like intense so there's no easy way to do things right now there's no just hey i'm gonna take restore myself i'm gonna go hang out with all the people i love and do yoga for 90 minutes and just be reminded no we are doing yoga at home um <clears throat> there's this separation that's happened just to, there's just, there's no easy way right now. So denying the fact that we're exhausted is causing more pain. 
So I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything, but when we can ground our souls, we can actually anchor into the depth of what we contain. Now, to just clarify, soul is the down and in energy. Soul is the feminine. Soul is the emotional. <clears throat> soul is what I believe we are here to do is allow our psyche, which is soul, to animate in this life. Now, I will encourage you and all of us to call on our higher self. That includes the soul. But usually when we get into the energy of spirituality, we intellectualize and we move up and out. So I'm all about happiness. I am all about joy. I am all about love. But we can't deny the darkness. So real quick, and then we're going to move. And we're going to move in this understanding of what happens when there's steadiness and loyalty and um, persistence. Well, we tend to be stubborn, we resist change, and we're starving for security. So what we have to learn how to do is find pleasure in new ways, okay? That's one layer that we're gonna move with. <clears throat> and finding pleasure in new simple ways, like watching spring come alive, the slowing down. The slowing down though for our nervous systems, especially those of us who live here in the United States of America, is really intense because we're used to everything happening quickly and we're going through righteous change. I mean, it's really, really intense. It's just like, it's almost like if you lived during the fall of the Roman Empire on some level. I didn't, but think about that. Everything that was solid and stable was collapsing. And so we're experiencing a little bit of that, right? So that sense of reliability and dependability on what was is vanishing and that is really difficult. So we wanna take care of our foundation. So if we're gonna ground the soul, we gotta get into what are our values, what, are, what brings us pleasure, what are our simple joys? It's got to be simple, okay? Now, the other thing that we're in is we're in this energy of like behind the scenes. We're in this energy of the mysterious. We're in the energy of the soul. It's dark. It's foggy. It's not clear. When you put those two energies it together, I come up with this idea of grounding the soul. We're going to do psoas. We're going to do hips. We're going to do really from heart down and just allow for a freedom of the head. So we're really going down and in today. We're not going up and out. So what you're going to feel, how many times have you come out of yoga and you felt a little stoned? You're out of fight flight. You're out of the intensity, the rush, the, the go, 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 go. Hello, ho that you're in that renewed sense of um, opportunity and potential. This is resilience. So we have to be able to sit with the darkness. So where I was going earlier, and I'm gonna come back to, and then we're gonna move. The sun, we have day and night. The sun sets. The sun goes into the underworld, if you will. It goes beneath the horizon to where we can't see it. The rays, the radiant rays of the sun cannot reach us, our skin, our eyes, our heart. And so in that, we rest and we restore. We, some people have a really hard time with it because it's not valued. I have clients who are working 70 hours a week and they're dealing with the fact that their, their coworkers are working 80 hours a week. It's not healthy. We, we've put this energy into being competitive and accomplish, achieve, accomplish, achieve, accomplish, achieve, accumulate. So we have to ground our souls, our humanitarian souls, to reevaluate and say, you know what? The sun is the center of all things. It is the symbol of our vitality. It is the spirituality, it is the energy that allows our souls to animate. So the sun sets. 
since my daughter keeps asking me when it's Easter, and while I am not a Christian, I have a strong contemplation with the teachings of Jesus Christ. There's three days from when he dies, right, to when he rises. Those three days are symbolic of a new moon, and the, when it sits with the sun, when the moon sits with the sun and you can't see the moon, you can't see the reflection of consciousness. It appears as if that energy that's being reflected to us is dead. Three days from that moment, we see the crescent moon again. We see life born. So this resilience can only happen when we allow for the death, when we allow for the, the going under if you will, the deep dive into that energy and not judging it. That's the thing. We criticize, man, I feel heavy, man, I feel emotional, man, I feel empty, man, I feel scared. Well, no, no joke, no joke. So what you do is you invite in practices that allow for movement, yay, yoga, and the subtleties and the subtleties are what soul is all about. So if you can ground into the knowing that the tiniest little nuanced move that I know we don't get to do as much in virtual yoga as we used to, is the energy of the soul. It is the, the realigning in the tiniest of ways to bring in more light, to animate, to bring it alive. And isn't it beautiful that as I've talked and spoke, the light, it was dark when I started and now here the light is pouring in gorgeously over my little corner. It's those things and pausing to breathe those moments in is what pulls us out of the externalization that the melancholy or the heaviness or the difficulty is bad. There's no bad or good, there's contrast. There's opposition. And so what we want to do is cultivate these practices to trust in the light, that the rays of our vitality are continuing to shine and will rise, because yes, we're moving into springtime, Saturday. And as they rise, they come alive and they remind us that we have unlocked our potential. We have unlocked a level of faith in this world where we might feel lost. So let's ground the soul. Let's get into behind the scenes, under the surface, in those waters that are we can have a hard time uh, navigating when we're surrounded by a world that sells us to just smile to just move forward, oh, just to get over it, to calm down, to take a breath. That's why I don't ever tell you to take a breath. So let's breathe, let's move, let's awaken the subtleties so our souls can feel grounded. So as we really are pioneering and being an explorer and staying curious, which is really the energy of the next couple of days, to be curious of, how can in this chaos and in the void and in the darkness, we can give birth to something new? All right, we are gonna start in child's pose. And if child's pose doesn't work, start lying down on your belly. And I'm so happy, Pat and Hope and Martha, I think you're here and anybody else who's here, whether you're live or on the replay, and that you're still with me because nobody likes to talk about these difficult things. And yes, they're much easier to talk about when we're sitting in circles with one another because we feel seen. And what that's the biggest thing that when you feel melancholy or lost is you don't even feel seen by your own self. So we have to learn how to widen our vantage point to look inward and see through the crevices. I mean, come on, in the bottom of the ocean, there's still light. There's still life. It's just different than that which is here on earth. And yoga teaches us how to deep dive into the waters and also stand on solid ground. So here we go. Child's pose or lying flat on your belly. And I'm telling you right now, I'm still nursing my hip. 
Ah, it's just what I inherited. <laughs> so I have to be super mindful of my movement and hopefully that'll encourage you to also be mindful. And here we go. And as you come into child's pose or lying on your belly, I want you to curl inward. I really would love to play the Coldplay song Midnight right now, but I can't, so just know. Five breaths today. Subtle shifts, transformation, five breaths. In all the poses we do, we have this kind of fixed loyalty of earth energy, a little bit of stubborn. And so notice where you're reluctant to allow for the subtle shifts. Okay, so we can allow for the transformation. So we can allow for the destruction so we can rebuild. And then also feel that energy of how those deep waters allow for the change in subtle ways. And then inhale, stretch your hands out. Okay? If you have an hour, if you were, then just keep them stretched out. Let the arms lift up and just feel the opening through the shoulders, relax through the neck. And then inhale up into a cat stretch. Exhale all the way out. And then inhale, pull your hips back, stretching out. Exhale all the way. So the hands are fixed, firm, they're strong. Inhaling up, breathing into the back body and exhaling into that cat stretch. Inhaling, thighs move back, belly lifts, hands stay grounded. Exhale into child's pose. Inhaling into that cat stretch, round it back, pull into the core as you exhale. Inhale, breathe into the back body, hips stretch back. Remember, fives are a lucky number. Rising up. So it's subtle, right? How many times have we done cat, cow, and child's pose? We're just doing it different. We're allowing for the movement. Inhale, come up. Rounding the back. Pull it to the core. Inhale, stretch back. We're allowing the movement so that, that we don't stay stuck. Nobody wants to be stuck. And the fastest way to get unstuck is to move. Now, inhale, open the heart up into a cow stretch. You're gonna tuck your toes, knees lift. Now pull the hips back, all right? So knees come to the ground, open the heart up. You're leaning forward, we're exaggerating. Knees lift up, hips pull back. Knees to the earth, open the heart. So we're allowing for that kind of solidity. The loyalty of the body, even when it gets hurt. All right, so we're going for five. I think we have just one more. You are in charge of you. You show up for you. Now, here you are, you're back. Lift the hips all the way up as you rise up, and then exhale, let the knees come towards the ground again. Inhale, lift through the inner thighs, lift through the core, and then exhale. Hug the outer hips, knees hover. Inhale, lifting. Exhaling. Use the core. Feel that engagement. Go for five. I'm not really good at keeping count, just so you know. I am so intuitive German. Rise all the way up. Right leg lifts. And then exhale, knee to the heart. Draw all the way up and back. Open it up. Draw the knee in. We're gonna round the back here. Pull into the belly. Lift up, open it up. So feeling, we're getting connected to that deep inner space. This time, I feel like we got one more. Rise up, open up. Step the foot all the way through to a lunge. 
knee to the earth. Now, if you'd rather do a high lunge, go for it. Feel free to do a high lunge. My hip says not a bloody chance. It's not good when you're mobile. Believe it or not, it's better to be hyperstable. Hug the outer hips towards the center, wherever you are. Ground it, and hands are gonna clasp, shoulders to the back. Pull into the core, so we're getting into those psoas. Shoulders drawn to the back, open the heart, big full breath in, and then exhale, lean forward. Hands to the earth, back knee lifts, straighten the front leg, but bend the back knee, right, straight down. Notice where it's going, straight down. Pull into the belly, lengthen through the spine. And then exhale, lunge forward, rise up and back. Downward dog. Fixed hands. They're strong, they're grounded. You're aware. Inhale, the left leg up, knee bends, hip opens, and then pull into the belly, knee to the heart. Okay? And then sweep it back, open it up. We're just getting movement into the hip, slow, steady. And that move, we're feeling that kind of persistence in the security of the body, but we're allowing for the adaptability. We're allowing ourselves to mold with the energy. The container and coming alive within the container. And as we ground the container, believe it or not, we access the spirit through the mind, bring the foot forward, and we access the soul through the body. Step it through, knee to the ground, hug the legs towards each other, draw in, hands clasp, shoulders to the back, lift the heart. Big full breath in. Again, you could be in a high lunge, I'm choosing low. Full breath in. Full breath out. And then exhale, lean forward. Free the hands, knee lift. In seams of the legs are pulling back. Core, waistlines pulling back. Back knee bends. Stretch through the front leg. Full breath in. Full breath out. And then lunge forward, step back. Downward dog. Find the hands. Feel the breath, and then exhale. Knees come towards the earth. Inhale, the hips pull up. And exhale, so you're pulling into the belly. Shoulders are soft. Sorry, the shoulders are strong, heart is soft. Lift up. Knees towards the earth, rise. Two more. And then knees come all the way to the ground. Move all the way back, child's pose. Let it all go. Relax into it. Exhale out completely. Inhale, rise up onto your hands and knees. So in the, just being able to dance with the energy of our lives, turn to the long edge of your mat, standing on your knees. Left leg's gonna stretch out, arms go wide. Bend the knees so the thighs are going back, the tail anchors down, ribs are in, chest lifts up, and then reach up and over. To the left, big full breath in, and a full breath out. Inhale up through the center, right hand comes to the earth, left foot lifts, bend the knee, reach the hand for the foot. Deep breath in, pull the bottom rib cage up, shoulder comes into the back. Full breath in, <clears throat> and a full breath out. Hmm. Stretch, left leg long, Foot comes to the ground. Check in, draw into the belly, knee to the heart. Stretch the foot to the side, arm by your ear.
Deep breath in. And then exhale, bring the knee back to the earth. Inhale, come all the way up. Arm lifts up, hand can come down this time. <clears throat> and then exhale, you're gonna free back. The hips stretch back, the hands reach forward. So this is how we go behind the scenes. We're grounding in. Feel the connection to the inseams of your being. Arms are stretched forward. And then inhale, rise up. Knees come underneath your hips. Come all the way standing. Right leg stretches out. Thighs go back, arms are wide. Draw into the center, arms go up, lift up, reach over. Hmm. Belly, thighs, legs, all connected. Then inhale, rise up, hand to the earth. Left hand comes down, shoulders engaged, ribs, leg lifts, bend the knee. Hold on to the foot, hug the outer hips in, open the throat. Stay with the breath, stay connected, because we're breathing into the depths of our being is how we know we're alive. Because then we feel, we just feel. Free the foot, we don't pretend that all is okay and that we can handle it. Those days are over, over ladies. So ground into the right foot, draw into the belly, knee lifts, Stretch the foot, arm goes wide. Deep, full breath in, deep, full breath out. <clears throat> Knee comes back, foot sweeps back. Inhale, come up, hands to the ground. Lift up, reach over. Inhale, all the way up. Hips go back, hands reach out. Deep breath in, deep breath out. <clears throat> And then inhale, come back up onto hands and knees. Climb the knees forward, far enough. Toes tuck, and you're gonna come into a standing forward bend. Bow all the way in, feet grounded. <clears throat> Ground the ankles, push them into the earth if need be. And then roll the spine up, vertebrae by vertebrae. Come standing, hands back behind the head, shoulders, Elbows hugging, shoulders draw back, lift up, open the heart. Move from side to side, so you get long through both sides and you feel the connection to your core drawing in. Heart is open, then inhale the arms wide, step the feet. You could jump, but it's so masculine to me, it's so um, ambitious and jarring. So. The soul is not really about jarring. The soul is that energy that's unseen. It's the aroma of things. It's the sound of things. It's the way we feel. It's the way we smell. It's the way we see. Right foot turns out. Bend the right knee. <clears throat> so warrior two, no problem, right? Push into the earth. Stay toned and strong. Inhale, turn the right foot in. Left foot turns out. Warrior two, you so got this. What I want you to do is notice how much the ribcage, stay really clear to this connection here. Draw in, foot turns in, other foot turns out, exhale, bunch. Okay, your arms are wide, unless you need this help here. And we're gonna pivot, can you guess how many times? Five times, feeling this length here in that horizontal plane, so you can feel the ability to uh, tune more, so all of the change you're resisting, because we're changing a lot here, right? We've got each side two more times, okay? And as you feel yourself pivoting, notice how you're dancing with the energy, literally, but you're more steady, because we're repeating it, right? And then come all the way up. I know you're so excited, right foot turns out, Lunge in, elbow to the thigh, draw in, so check in, draw in, draw into the core, stretch the arm by your ear, open the heart. Find that length, that expansion. What are you grounding into? Usually our awareness goes up and out, like perform, perform, perform. I want you to go down 
and in into your roots. Nourish the areas that are unseen, the back body, the back of the neck, your buns. <laughs> and then inhale, come all the way up. Warrior two, five breaths. Draw the shoulders in, lift through the core. Hmm. Feel alive. And then inhale, straighten the leg, foot turns in. To the left, elbow to the thigh. Pull into the core, shoulders come into the back, stretch the arm. So these little movements we're doing, you guys know how to do side angle pose. The little subtle awareness, relax the hand, draw into the core, shoulders to the back. Keep that in, push through the feet, and expand. But you're really expanding inward. You're feeling the inner expansion more so than putting your energy outward, okay? Expanding inward, expanding into the parts of you that aren't fully satisfied. The parts of you that aren't sure why you're doing this or questioning. It's really good to question everything unless you stop living. Hmm. And then you can question, why aren't I living? And then just go live. Come up, warrior two, five breaths. And then inhale, straighten the leg, good news. Feet are wide, arms go wide. Fold forward, wide-legged forward bend. Move your arms where they go, where they land. Feel a deeper releasing after the working, right? And then inhale, find length. Right foot turns out. Lunge into the right knee, skandhanyasana. Inhale through the center. Lunge into the left knee, right? Heel stay grounded. It's kind of yes. Like, yes. We're going to each side five times. Right? Making it flowy without lots of transitions. You guys picking that up? Stay lifted through your core. Well, we have each side two more times. Okay. Come back over to the left. Now I live, come back to the center and fold forward. Exhale all the way over. <laughs> deep breath in. And a deep breath out. You're going to inhale and find length in the spine. Heel, toe the feet back in. Turn the feet out all the way into Malasana. Okay, we are going to keep the feet on the ground. When you see the earth sign, especially with water, feet will chance it's more than likely stay on the earth. If you see the earth sign with an air, chances are our foot's gonna come off the ground. If you see the water drop, we'll be doing a lot of hips and into the earth, a lot of muscular engagement. So you're here, you're not just dropped into it, right? I remember somebody that the studio I taught with, I would always say, don't pee on your legs. And she would always be like, what does that have to do with the class? It has to do with eliminating, okay? I know, I'm gonna go here, okay? Does anybody wake up and get out of bed and ignore the fact that they have to go to the bathroom? Other than my six-year-old son. It's a control thing. No, what do you do? You get up. Chances are the need to pee to release what you no longer needed interrupted your sleep so that you could go eliminate, which is water, is the cleansing. So it's interesting that we have no problem when we need to go to the bathroom. Hopefully it's not a problem that you can't hold the pee. That's a whole other conversation. But yes, we're still here, breathing into it, saying a prayer of understanding the subtle movement we're bringing in and honoring. Deep breath in, deep breath out. And then come all the way seated. 
okay? Come all the way seated, feet go wide. Oh yeah, if there's ever a pose of vulnerability and discontent is going from a squat to sit sitting wide-legged. So, unless you do yoga, this is a very foreign experience. Anytime something is new, you're in the darkness. You don't know how to do it. You are going to be confused. You are going to be scared. But there's something in you that asks you to take that risk. Fortunately, once we're over 25, our brain works a little better. But right now, our brains are working entirely different. What is being fired off is really beyond our comprehension. But if we can go into the movement of energy and we can realize, you know what, the risk it takes to get on my mat even virtually holds a greater reward than the control I'm placing on not showing up because it's not the way I want it to be. It is new, it is different, so it is dark. And when it's dark, it's foggy, right? It's confusing. And when we don't move things, guess what happens in the body? It gets foggy. Those areas in ourselves that hurt darken up. They literally build fuzz. Connective tissue is fuzz. Either keep your legs wide, or bend one knee in, find length through the side of the body, lots of left, just the right elbow to the knee, or maybe just the right hand. Maybe your torso is longer than your limbs, so perhaps you need to bring your hand here, shoulders to the back. My limbs are long, I can be here. Make sure you're not rounding, but you're actually drawing the ribs over, lifting that side body, shoulders to the back, stretch the arm by your ear, okay? Simple, but new, because we haven't done again. It's a plank, upper dog, or cobra pose, free practice. Push the legs to the earth, draw them to the belly, and then inhale, come all the way up through the center. So either left hand to left shin, or elbow to the thigh, draw them to the belly, shoulders to the back, reach over. So what's going on behind the scenes, right? Clearly, I'll tell you right now, my daughter's watching TV, the doorway to my room, you just saw Lulu come in, is open, the doorway to the TV room is open, so you can probably hear PBS Kids in the background. So, what's going on behind the scenes for you? My low back is talking, the shoulders drawing in, and I'm not trying to push past the pain, I'm actually gonna back off more and strengthen the core more and then release my need for a deep stretch on this side and allow for more composure on this side that feels overly vulnerable. And then exhale, arms gonna come down, rise up, lift, left arm. Now, this is like so old school Teresa. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna like clear all that sits in front of us. That left arm's gonna come down you're gonna sweep, you gotta be mindful of your inner thighs, sweep the arms through, right arm comes through, ground down, stretch the arm by your ear, or perhaps you're here. Then right arm sweeps through, left arm comes through, rise up. Maybe you can find your foot and be here. Arm sweeps, push into the earth, drawn to the core, shoulders drawn to the back, reach in the other direction. Yes, we're going for five. We're just clearing the ground by staying connected and centered into our own energy so that we can ground into our strength as we navigate new ways of being, but staying persistent in the loyalty we hold to our soul, to that which is unseen. Go to each side two more times, breathing, and being connected to your own expression, animating the energy of you through movement. And 
then come all the way back through the center, both hands to the shins or both hands out in front of you. If you make it to the ground, amazing. It doesn't matter if you can or you can't. It's about practicing, it's about showing up. It's about investigating and being the explorer of your inner realm and discovering that the soul is the hero of the story, you. Not everything you do for everybody else, but at the end of the day, when you go to bed at night, even if you're snuggled up next to somebody, a cat, a dog, a child, a lover, you're still gonna go to sleep with yourself. So we put all these conditions on what makes us happy outside of ourselves, but if we can actually learn how to awaken our soul, embrace all the parts of us, the whole self, and nourish, then we enrich. And in that enrich enrichment, we evolve. completely ground into the earth, lengthen the spine, and now rise up. We are going to bend the right knee. Yes, your hips are tapping, right? And here's the deal. Go for a walk um, in a little bit, or tomorrow, right? When there's no crazy winds running through. And I want you to go for a walk in nature and witness the birds chirping louder, seeing how much things are coming, budding through the trees, noticing the fragrances, right? Are you sneezing because the pollen? Uh, Udell posted a picture of a flower that's blooming this year because, and so did Tony Nold and Mary V. All three of these places, the great, um, amazing plant people of Louisville uh, have demonstrated this flower that's blossoming and the fragrance is supposedly amazing and it usually never gets to bloom because of the frost. That is persistence. Even though it doesn't get a chance to bloom, it still stays aligned to its potency. So find them, and I want you to feel your inner thighs moving back, your outer hips holding you in, your heart lifted, but you're breathing into the back body. That's a tall order, by the way. So stretch the left leg long, right thigh comes parallel to the short edge of your mat, elbows come to the earth, and then stretch if you can. You may not be able to stretch the right leg all the way out. Okay, this is big into the psoas. What you're going to have to do is probably come up onto your hands, lift up slightly, re-lower, internally rotating the leg, pulling that energy all the way into the heart, then wrapping, so you're really working your core here, wrapping the right outer hip towards your tail, elbows come to the thigh, to the earth, I did it again, elbows come to the earth, draw into the belly, soften the heart. This is an example of subtle movement awakening so much on the inside. And if you're really working your core, you're drawing the belly in, you're going to feel it all through your viscera, the deep layers of your being. If you didn't know, five breaths. And then exhale out completely. You're gonna bend the back knee, come up to your hands, you're using your belly. So, stretch the leg out. From the sole of the foot, pull up and in. Draw the hips back, stretch the arm by your ear. So we're getting still this turn, this energy turning in, this link through the side body, the heart opening up. And then we're going to draw the knee in, come into pigeon pose. Knee comes to the earth, spine grows long. 
Do you need your pigeon to be here today? Right? Does it need to be further to the ground? Do you need your pigeon rising up? Right? And just being upright? Do you require a thigh stretch? I do not. Or do you require that royalness of hugging to the midline, staying connected, and arms going high? Maybe even a uh, mermaid is there for you. I want you to tune into your energy and your expansion from inside. Hmm. And then exhale, hands all the way to the earth. Or inhale, come all the way up. Move the knee over, spin and turn, here we are. Lengthen through the spine, we're gonna twist. So if you need to bring this outer hip forward, bring it forward. Slight twist, reach over, right hand for the left shin or foot, draw in and bow. So, for those of you who are familiar with the language of Anusara and you've heard organic energy, it's the energy of the soul, right? It's that reminder that we're all stardust, that we are all made from the ingredients of the skies, that all is contained in the sun, our vitality, the rays of light, it is how we exist. You do not have to worship it, but you can at least acknowledge it and then awaken to the sun and to the soul of you. Five breaths, just in case you forgot. Exhale all the way out. You're engaging this connection here. So you rise up from that darkness, right? You rise up from, there's a little level of melancholy in forward bends. It's, I don't know, don't be afraid of it. That's the, just don't be afraid of it. Now what happens is the whole rabbit hole, you keep opening the door or you keep seeing that hole in the ground and you're like, I'm just gonna go burrow down there because that's familiar. Yeah, babe. Ooh, awesome, okay. <laughs> Elimination, right? That's what we have to pay attention to. It's like, wait a second. Hey, hole in the ground, I keep running down that tunnel. I don't need to go, go there anymore because it's safe for me to be a little risky and navigate forward and instead of always going to the lane that's familiar. That's the lane of victimhood or martyr or, um, Perfectionist, right? Okay, here we go, second side. You're gonna swing up. This is where I have to be super careful, you guys. Um, okay, okay, let me get them in this pose and then I'll come help you out. Left, right leg stretches long. I, and then bring your left thigh parallel to the short edge of the mat. There's no way I'm gonna be able to straighten my leg. So hands come to the earth, draw into the belly. You're gonna roll the outer hip down, draw into the core, and then come down to the elbows. Oh, look, I said there's no way. I just had to get aligned first in the core. Draw in, lengthen, and then bow into it, five breaths. Exhale out completely, come up onto your hands. Ground into that foot, you can use this hand to pull you back. Stretch up, pull the hips back, arm sweeps over. Five breaths here, feeling the length, drawing in. That foot's pulling in. And then exhale, the hand comes down. Knee comes to your wrist. Pigeon in the expression that's you. I'm gonna go take care of my young lady and I'll be right back, but you find the pigeon that works for you.
gonna rise up, lean over, and then you're gonna come so that your, oh, this is what I have to, it's not gonna work. You have to come over to your right leg, and I'm gonna have to do this. I cannot externally rotate my leg <laughs> at all. I think I bruise the interior bone. Don't, don't, please don't pity me. It's actually rather humorous because my mom just moved here and guess whose body I inherited? I inherited hers and all of its little things. The good news is, is I've done yoga, so I don't fall and break my hand. <laughs> but just a little thing like my daughter sitting in my lap while I meditated for 40 minutes has bruised the bruised the bone. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So I'm just being very mindful. And you're right, whoever said you need arnica, I have heard you and I will get on it. So turn, both hips to the ground, draw into the belly, find length. So this is an example of grounding the soul. This is the, the, the respect of my body. Even though you're watching me and I'm guiding you, I am gonna try to push it. Draw into the belly, stay into the core, hand to the foot or the shin, and bow forward. You've got to adjust both hips. So you're pulling into the waistline so that you fill up the back body. The hips stay grounded. If we're gonna ground our soul, we have to be willing to bow into it. We have to be willing to go into the deeper layers of our being. And if you're not a depth person, I don't know why you're here then. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with people who stay on the surface. We need them. But my genius is helping you to go deeper into the unexplored areas of your being and feel safe and bring the light forward. Exhale out completely, drawn to the core, lengthen the spine. So you're going to initiate the movement from that inner essence, from that inner connection, not from here, not from your goal and your destination and what you hope to accomplish, but actually being highly present to all that you feel and rise up. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't like what you feel, then you have to be willing to allow for change, right? You just have to. Once you come all the way up, both legs are gonna stretch out. I've been dealing with hip stuff my whole life, everybody. It's not a new thing. It's just new that it's on this side. You're gonna come into a comfortable seat, a seat that works best for you. And as you find that seat, you can sit on something, you can go to a chair, you can sit against a wall. Uh, my dentist uh, meditates. Tammy, those of you who know who Tammy is, she just cleaned my teeth and my kids' teeth. And I was talking about how when I meditate, my body doesn't hurt. And Dr. Shea was talking about how his knees always hurt. And there's... And I said, oh, well, I get comfortable when I meditate. And his eyes got all big, like, oh, how dare you? There are different ways of being. And I laughed and I was like, I would never meditate. My body hurts all the time. Or I would never come back. I wouldn't come back. I would just go out into the cosmos and stay there forever. So sit in a way that works for you. Feel supported. It is essential that we feel safe. I remember some of I know so many people who can't, Close their eyes in Shavasana because their nervous system, it, you freak out on the inside. We need to feel held. We need to feel supported, especially right now because there's a part of our brain that is being forced to fade, right? The attachment to the way things were. And there's a part of our brain that's being asked to, like everything you do right now, you have to think it through twice, right? We're learning how to leave the house 
Nobody thinks twice about putting a shirt on before they leave the house, and hopefully you don't have to think twice even about brushing your teeth. We've been conditioned. And in the deconditioning, we're having to learn new things of being spacious and respectful and compassionate. So start with yourself. Let the eyes close, sit in a way that works for you. We're only gonna be here for a short moment, but this is it, we have to sit with the energy. You're gonna go into your navel. You're gonna go into the depths of your bowels. You're gonna respect your gut. You're gonna eat well. You're gonna nourish it with your awareness. You're not gonna condemn it, you're not gonna judge it, you're not gonna criticize it. You're just going to breathe into it and invite, I've been talking about the sun, invite an array of vitality or whatever it is you wanna bring in, straight from the heavens, straight from the divine, God, however you like, I invite it straight down and in. You can go into the underworld, if you will, of your belly, maybe it grumbles, and unlock the structures that bind you so that your soul can come alive and feel more free. Honor that light within. Nourishing the seeds of your own essence. The womb of your soul. The energy that animates your life from behind the scenes. The coordinators of allowing you to be real and be true to be mindful and soulful. Breathe into the awareness and acknowledgement of all the hurdles you've climbed, all the pain you've experienced. Honor your strength, your power, your tenacity that comes from your vulnerability, your willingness to be courageous, and curious and compassionate. Inhale, bring the hands together in front of the center of your forehead or your throat or your heart as reverence. to the beauty that is contained in the chaos. And slowly come lying all the way down. And as you come lying all the way down, you're lying in to the nourishment to restore and to that symbolic energy of the, those three creation, sustenance, dissolution of the three nights, however you want to put it. And as you recline into the earth, that you feel the foundation of the ground beneath you, the four walls around you, the sky, the ceiling above you, that there is a structure that you are filling your space with your energy. The energy that you've renewed, that you've grounded into, and that you're allowing to guide you.
Our soul is the spark of our heart. Enjoy a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Enjoy your choice to show up. Because when we show up on our mat, even though we first find so many reasons why not to. <laughs> Thank you, ego. But then there's something inside of us that knows that we need to. And the victory is when we overcome the denial of our true needs, our essence. Wiggle your toes and your fingers. Sway your head from side to side. And then slowly bring your knees into your chest. Give yourself a nice hug. Rock and roll from side to side. Hmm. And then slowly roll to one side. Pause and honor, because this is that moment, right, where we're reborn. It is the same. Even though you want it to be different, it is the same. Come up seated. Find the sweetness. I was telling somebody the other day, because she was asking, are you gonna be in person soon? Are you gonna return to a studio? When is that gonna be? I miss it so much. It was so important to me to have that structure. I said, I'm not going back to the way it was. And I don't know yet what it will be, but what I do know is it's grounding for me to continue to show up. because it's just who I am. I dive deep into the energy of transformation, to the subtleties, to what is behind the scenes. And I'm a coordinator of the way uh, we animate our lives. And so in that soulful way, what this past year has taught me has empowered me is to continue to help guide you in more clear ways of how to ground into your own sacred essence. And even if it is just the simple physical movement of your body, saturated with the sound of my own voice, then that's enough. But I can only hope that this journey of showing up and dancing in this new way of life, that it serves you in service of that soul of humanity in the collective. May we welcome in the light and say hello to all that is illuminating our days and our nights.
Namaste. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, literally, and straight from my heart to yours. This is our last um, class uh, in this Pisces water, this uh, mutable water energy season, because guess what? That mutable water is that thawing out of what was frozen and giving birth to newness, to that cardinal fire, to that initiator of life, to that rebirth, to coming alive, to being a warrior. And so next week we'll be in full on fire. Wow! And it's gonna be the energy of the mind. So we will feel this up and out without forgetting the down and in, okay? So I'm just putting that out there. I appreciate you all. Um, I appreciate the, the actual uh, financial love offerings that some of you have uh, provided. And um, I admire your ability to find your way to do it. Mm. Yay, I'm glad your heart is energized. It's kind of wild, Pat, right? Like, when we ground, right? This is a good way to close up. When we actually ground and we go inward, guess what? More energy comes forward. It's just like when you have a good night's sleep or when you finally can go to the bathroom, right? Like my daughter did in between. She doesn't wait, she doesn't hesitate. She doesn't go, oh, I'm gonna inconvenience my mom. She just takes care of herself. Yay, Vivian. Um, but we feel better. It's so crazy. And so you're going to you're going to feel better taking the chance than you will just standing in the fear and the uncertainty of what could be. So thank you for taking a chance with me. I can't believe it. I really can't believe um, <laughs> I've been this consistent on social media. So to what will be. I thank you guys. Um Deeply, I really do. Pat and Julie and Diane and Perry and Hope and Sarah, you guys, um, it means a lot. Mary, when I see these little notice of like, oh, you got money. It's um, a wild time and um, it'll continue to be wild, and but we're making it. We're finding our way, and I just, I adore you guys so much. Even though I can't see you, Martha, I know you're there, and your energy is so with me, and um, it has mattered. It has mattered a lot as we're all navigating this change, so thank you, thank you, thank you. And I know there's a lot of you guys, um, Carissa and Allison, there's a lot of you who, um, Peter and Elizabeth, there's just a lot of you who I know are navigating um, wild waters as well. And just know that I appreciate you too, okay? Not all of us have the financial freedom to support. And so I'll continue to be of service. Um, it's just, a privilege that I have, but I also can't deny the fact that I'm a human being <laughs> and I have to keep my business going so that I can keep going for you. So have a beautiful afternoon. Have a beautiful uh, transition into spring. I will be um, hopefully able to show up with a little dun -dun -dun, uh, new ways of um, just articulating the energies of our soul that illuminate our days. Um, I'll still be here at 10 a.m. Tuesday and Thursday to teach you live or on the replay. Farewell, my friends. Happy spring.